Mr. Baseless Dupin got us another cut content, light novel content for Classroom of the Elite. Probably one of the best episodes, last episode, episode 8. Let's see what he has to say. Classroom of the Elite Season 3 Episode 8 is here and we're almost done with Volume 10. I say almost because we're likely going to see the final and most insane moment of this volume next week. So, people were saying, I think even Mr. Baseless Dupin said that they were a little bit afraid of episode 8 which was last week's about how it's looking like they're going to finish up the volume and they might ruin the pacing of it but they didn't because we still don't know this like last bit and this last bit apparently is like insane people are hyping up tomorrow's episode more than the previous episode which i think is one of the best episodes of class and elite so if you're going to tell me that hold up hold up my tier list of best episodes of this anime should not be made yet because we're not finished this season yo that gets my hype up for the next couple episodes unless they straight up skip it which would definitely be something though i do have to say even though the light novel is way better the anime did manage to surprise me considering how much time they had to jam 120 plus pages mm. but there's still quite a bit of cut content to get through so let's not waste any more time. Let's and get on with it. The cut content and Stop spamming to bits! Episode. Thank you guys. Starting off, we have quite a funny cut line from Yama God himself. During the beginning of the class, cut line from Yama God? Horikita is pressing Yamauchi. Yama God. Plus, I me, mean, come on. I'm kind of cute and alright. Not like a certain problem child like Koenji who cuts class even during special exams. He shouted Yamauchi. Yamauchi, you ain't cute. You know who's cute? Koenji's cute because he is not cutting class. Well, he is. He's probably on a date with third year girls at Palette, the coolest cafe on campus. Flexes his looks while comparing himself to Koenji. Next up, the entire discussion was narrated by Kyo, but in terms of the actual discussion, almost every single line made it into the anime until the Hirata moment. Oh? In the light novel, instead of kicking the desk, Hirata straight up flips the entire desk. What? Plus the light novel makes him seem way more cold and unhinged. To the point- Is there a Hirata light novel illustration of when he does this shit? I wanna know. Hey, what Hirata could- Girls cried out and believe. I couldn't believe it either. I wanted to think he just happened to get carried away in his movements and caught his foot on the desk. Oh yeah, somehow got his foot on the desk caught up and he fucking flipped the table. Chabashira felt the same way too. This behavior was both completely unexpected and just impossible to believe coming from him. Maybe you're the one that shouldn't be here anymore. I think this is Hirata talking to, uh, what's her name? Suzune, right? His low, intense words carried throughout the classroom. Even now, my brain still refused to register that this cold voice belonged to Hirata. Perhaps this is a monologue from Anna Koji's like, perspective, but even Koji never... I'm sure he had an idea, right? But like even Koji, at this point of the anime, never really understood what Hirata's defect could have been where Chabashira and even Ayano Koji himself were shocked and found it hard to believe. And even though Horikita was arguing with Hirata, Kiyo noticed that even she was shaken up and scared by Hirata <laughs> during their entire discussion. Well, I think it's scary. How many of you guys have this happen where it's like you're like a kid and there might be like an adult like your dad or an uncle or a big bro or some person, even a friend that's always nice and always calm, but like when they actually lose it and they actually get mad for the first time and you witness it, it's like so different from a person that's always mad. When a person is always mad, you're so habituated, you're so normalized to it, you're like, you expect it. But when the nice guy starts getting fucking heated for the first time and you're like, oh shit, yo, we better fucking listen up. Also, the major difference during this scene is that we have some context as to Hirata acts like this because of his monologue from the beginning of the volume. Which they skipped. I'm not gonna spoil you guys since they have to mention it at some point, but I'm genuinely mad that they didn't show it before his breakdown as it makes the scene so much freaking better. Apparently in season 2, the luxury yacht special exam arc, there was hints of Hirata doing this shit, right? That was kind of skipped, apparently. And I was saying how Hirata probably his defect, it's, hev it's heavily hinted, that uh, Hirata doesn't like the leadership Susan is doing, right? He understands Yamauchi is shit, but 
the way that Susan A is ruling? Is it too authoritarian? I don't know. He's objectively calling out the bullshit and we're doing a democratic vote, right? It's not like dictatorship, but like I think that somehow it, this has to go with this flashback. Maybe due to this type of leadership in the past, Hirata had to suffer some really insane losses and this traumatized them. And I'm like, yo, this flashback better fucking be good. Because if this is another bullshit flashback like Ichinos is, which I understand, I understand it's a cultural difference, but to, you know, to portray shoplifting in such a criminal way, it's like I can't take it seriously. I hope Hirata's flashback clutches, but I've already seen comments of people saying, get your expectations down, bro. That shit's trash. After the discussion, Nope, skip, skip. I'm kidding, I can't skip this part. Fucking Sakura wasting my fucking time. And we actually get an Ayano Koji group scene. After Kyo leaves the class, the rest of them follow him and they're genuinely angry for him seeing that so many people were going to vote for him. So we can safely assume obviously everyone in Ayano Koji group, you know, did not vote for, you know, did not side with Yamauchi. Kyo tries to warn them. Hey, are you okay with this? If you guys aren't careful, you could be targeted by Yamauchi's group, I said out loud. Well, if they're coming after one of us, I say bring it. I'm never going to let someone from our group get expelled. Haruka sounded angry. Yo, that was Haruka, blue hair girl? Giga Chad. And she was showing no signs of calming down, unlike usual. I agree. There isn't a single reason why Kiyotaka should be expelled, said Keisei, sharing Haruka's thoughts on the matter. Everybody's so good on this table, dude. Haruka, goaded. Keisei, goaded purple hair dude that i still don't know his name but i know that he can fight goaded fuck you sakura that they might get targeted if they stay close to him but all of them don't care and want to stay by kyo's side it was such a wholesome moment so it really sucks that it got cut akito that, gotcha all of them go to a cafe to discuss some things and some of them wonder what's gonna happen during the exam after they leave the cafe they notice Hirata outside of the cafe, sitting alone on a bench looking lifeless. <laughs> After thinking that Hirata was likely waiting for him, Ayano Koji goes over to talk with him. But before approaching him, he actually takes a photo oh? of Hirata. He took a photo of Hirata? <laughs> I nodded in response to Akito's warning and broke away from the group, grateful that everyone in the group understood what I was getting at. They headed on back, but I didn't go over to Hirata right away. Instead, I took a picture of him, like how Ryuhun was taking pictures of us, <laughs> looking completely depressed and dispirited from a distance. Then sent a picture to K along with a short text. What was a short text? You did this to him, K. It's because you broke up with him that this is happening. <laughs> and sends it to K along with a message. Hirata first talks about how cruel this exam is and how he hates the idea of losing someone. Then asks if that someone is a backstabbing rat like Yamauchi, that would hurt you? Why? Why do you care about Yamauchi so much? I don't think it's about Yamauchi. I think it's about the principle of how we expelled Yamauchi, right? It is about... It's not a personal matter. It is for him with his own personal beliefs, but it was never really about like whether or not Yamauchi's trash or we're allowed to cut him or not. It's about the fact that we're allowed to cut him through this process that really bothers him. It's like, who gives a fuck? He's so trash. Like, why are you like this? Why? What, what's wrong with you? Asks Kyo, can he leave it all up to him? Asking Kyo to lead the class from now on. Kyo denies his request and tells him if he wants to protect the people in his class, then he has to do it himself. Ooh. Then tells him, why not vote for all three, Horikita, Yamauchi, and himself? Then leave the rest to the class to decide. I guess that Hearing would this, even out his guilt. How he was approached by both Horikita and Yamauchi. As I was sitting here, I was approached by both Horikita and Yamauchi kun. Horikita san told me to vote for Yamauchi. Yamauchi told me to vote for you. They had their way, they each had their way of arguing their case, but you're the only one trying not to throw someone else to the wolves. That's not something just anyone can do. <sighs> what is up with this guy? Horikita asking to vote for Yamauchi and Yamauchi asking to vote for Kyo and appreciates Kyo for not throwing anyone under the bus. After that, he he'll throw himself under the bus before anyone else. That's why I was like, yo, straight up, I could see a future where Hirata like wanted to get himself expelled to like sacrifice him for the class. Like, that's the kind of doormat he is, right? Hirata stands up and says that he thinks he has found an answer and leaves after thanking Kyo. 
What's the answer? Throw a fucking flip the table to Susan and say that you're a bitch? After that, we move on. Manabe! Our favorite D class girl now. What the other classes are up to? Class D and B scenes had some small changes. Instead of meeting with Ryuan outside, Ibuki actually goes into his room late at night. Oh? And did the whole wall bang? I like girls that are rebellious. <laughs> Wait, did that still happen in, in bed? Where she encounters him half naked. <laughs> I mean, he is always half naked. Have you seen the amount of cleavage Ryu and shows, bro? That fucking shirt has always like minimum four buttons like already popped. He's showing his fucking man titties more than any other girl at the school, dude. Ryu and also asks if Ibuki came to spend the night together before he gets expelled, naturally making Ibuki extremely angry. And during the class B scene, instead of everyone acting like NPCs, Kanzaki tries to ask Ichinose a Not gonna lie. Class B, they all do seem like NPCs. More than class C or like like I just don't know the B class students, you know what I mean? Like I kinda know Kanzaki, I guess. We know Ichinose, but like aside from that, who the fuck are the B class students? You know what I mean? Who the fuck are they? I have no clue who they are. They're background characters, dude. About why Naguma agreed to lend so many points and what he wants in return. And even though Ichinose isn't allowed to tell anyone about their deal, she does tell them that they will most likely disagree with her if they do know about it. Hmm. Then we have the Class A stuff, which was way longer in the light novel. We first start with the flashback. Okay, I never, I should have fucking made fun of this in the reaction. I should have. I didn't have the presence of mind, but it's like, what is Baldi doing here, dude? Like, this is the scene where um, I believe um, Class A is talking about how the state of Katsuragi, and we're reporting like Katsuragi seems as he seems as calm and bald as ever. He's just sitting there. Like, this is like after school hours. Bro is sitting at his table, and like, what is his right left hand man? I guess because he's on the left hand side. What is he doing just standing there, bro? They are literally just sitting here. They're not waiting for anything. They're not doing anything. School is over and he's just sitting there doing nothing because this is a single frame used to like show and portray that Katsuragi has accepted and that he's pretty calm with it. But it's just like so bizarre to me that he's just sitting here at like 7 p.m. 5, like 6 p.m. School's done. What, what, Yachio, fucking sit down. What are you doing? After that day, the exam was announced. <laughs> Look at that fucking dent on his head, dude. Look at that fucking dent on his head. Tyler one head said dent. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Do you see the resemblance here, guys? Do you see, where is it? This one and this one. Yeah? That's so fucked up that the animators actually animated this single line here. To show that dent. That is so fucked up. That's more mean than anything I've ever done to bald people in anime, dude. And literally five minutes after the exam was announced, Arisu tells the entire class to vote for Katsuragi. To which, aside from Yahiko, all the rem- Sorry, I called him Yachiho before. Yahiko, I'm sorry. He is the most forgettable character. He did have some limes in season one. He was in the cave and he was like the fake VIP or maybe he was the VIP actually, but he came out of the cave saying that. Besides from that, like, I do not remember, remember this dude. Remaining 37 students agree displaying her control over the entire class. All 37 students agreed, huh? I guess, what is Katsuragi's role now? What is Katsuragi's role? It seems like he's just kind of lost the faction war, huh? I think that, um, I, I, I truly think that Arisu did not expel Baldi because of second year reasons. Because I feel like the whole premise of first year even though we are trying to gun for each other, I feel like this is to really establish who the core players are in all of first year. We have Arisu and Katsuragi. And we also have Arisu's henchmen, obviously. We have Ichinose. Then we have Ryuin, Ibuki, and Ishizaki, and Albert. Then we have Koji and the gang, right? These main players, I feel like, might even have to collaborate and work together. Exactly. Katsuragi is too useful, right? Arisu finds Katsuragi useful. So second year... Is it truly gonna still be the same thing of people just infighting in the same year? Or are we gonna start like collaborating and like teaming up with people that you would have never expected to team up? 
to fight like new students, like second years to third year students, you know, maybe even the new first year students coming up, right? I feel like that is the way that class community elite has to progress or else, cause like you can't just repeat the same thing, right? First year has to be just who are the first years? Who are the main key players, right? Then let's move on. Second year, these main key players now come together and fight, you know, other new students that weren't shown in like the second, third year, right? You're sipping tea? Maybe I'm wrong, who knows? After classes, Arisu gets a call from Yamauchi and Kamoro lets us know that they've- Today? Not at all, I don't mind. Let's meet. I'm afraid that I do have a minor prior engagement first, so I'll have to meet you after that. Yamauchi-kun, you're so cute, said Sakayanagi. Based on the content of the conversation, Kamuro immediately understood that this was yet another lovey-dovey phone call from Yamauchi. I wanna know. I wanna know what Yamauchi's saying in these phone calls, dude. You know he changes his voice and starts talking like, I don't know, because you know how like people like start getting all like baby talk whenever they talk to like pets, dogs, cats, and stuff like that, or maybe into their loved ones. How would I hear Yamauchi on the phone? Oh, Arisu, baby, what are you doing? We've been talking to each other almost every single day recently, and Kamuro also gets disgusted, thinking that Arisu is serious about dating Yamauchi. <laughs> She's actually just <laughs> disgusted. Arisu then asks Yamauchi if they can meet up in person. Uh. So they decide to meet at a karaoke bar. And they were also joined by Kamuro, which... Oh, so uh, I see Kamuro-chan is with you again today. So Yamauchi, they went to a karaoke bar together. This is disgusting. I'm sorry. I'm still kind of shy about going out on a date with just the two of us. <laughs> Replied Sakayanaki. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Totally fine, seriously. I'm just happy to be able to even go on a date like this. <gasps> oh my god, they actually went on dates. Well, I feel like Yamauchi did better than Nagumo this arc, bro. Nagumo didn't even get the date. Bro got his formula rejected. Yamagot is fucking three. He's having a threesome right now with Kamado and Arisu. Yamagot is actually fucking living it up. Which made Yamagot sad because he couldn't be alone with Arisu. They first talk about lovey-dovey stuff with Arisu acting like all cute and shy for Yamauchi. Like what? Which my girl Kamuro was repulsed by. Then repulsed. Arisu tells Yamauchi that he should try to expel someone in their class because she doesn't want to lose Yamauchi. <laughs> and to put the nail on the coffin, Arisu tells Yamagot that she has something very important to talk about oh? after the exam ends. After the exam ends. So like, we might still get this in the anime? So now, we finally move on to the exam day. So here's what I think about Arisu's plan, because this makes no sense, right? So I thought that she's after Anakoji, right? But like, she saves him because the king must remain. Now, it might be the same line of thinking of why, why save Katsuragi, because he's too competent, right? But also, doesn't this make Anakoji look so suspicious? Doesn't this make him, like, he's supposed to be a random NPC from the perspective of everyone else, right? Most people think that he's just a mob character. Yet, he was the one almost being expelled because the entire school, like, entire class half of them rallied. And now he gets all the protection votes from A class. Wouldn't you think from an outsider's perspective, it's like, why the fuck did you get saved by Aisu, huh? Why would you ever, you know, why, why, why would you get all these votes if you're not important yourself? So maybe this is, again, yet another roundabout way of how Arisu does things, right? She, how do I explain this? What is a good analogy for this? I feel like she's always playing games even though we're not even playing it. Like, she always says, I'm going to duel you, but psych, I'm going to do something else. But in fact, I was dueling you in a way that you would never expect it. And in, in this way, this is to basically make everyone else suspicious of Ayanokoji, right? To get everybody to get... To, for them to turn on Ayanokoji? I don't know. But it definitely causes red flags to everyone else, right? If they see that, holy shit, you know, Ayanokoji got all the votes from A-class. There's got to be something up with it. Arisu's plan was to basically not get Ayanokoji expelled, but to expose his secrets, right? Because that is so important to him because he's trying to live a casual free life away from his parents at the school but by her doing this all of a sudden he can't just live a quiet life anymore right i'm not really sure before the voting starts hirata stands up and apologizes to horikita and then tells the entire class to vote him out 
naturally. Well, the Manabu versus the, the race versus Manabu, that is an intentional thing we did to basically not be such an NPC because we're doing too much of an NPC. We need to throw Riwin's, Riwin off, right? We need to make Riwin think that, oh shit, he stood out for a bit. He can't be that person, right? So that was still all according to plan. That was Anakoji intentionally doing that. But right now, we're being forced, right? We're being forced to do this shit. And now it looks bad. Unless this is all, at the end of the day, Anakoji's fucking grand plan that he puppeteered Arisu to make her think that she's exposing him when, in fact, he wanted that all this time. I don't fucking know what this show, dude. ...leaving everyone shocked and Horikita being completely against this. To which Hirata replies that he already hates everyone in the class and doesn't want to stay here anymore. Even Mi-chan? No, you, you don't mean that. Even, even Mi-chan? Mi-chan's Mi still trying to ask you out, man. Everyone is- Oh no, Mi-chan! Mi-chan! It's mostly silent after Hirata is done talking, but of course, Yamagot tells everyone to vote for Hirata since he's asking for it himself. After that, Chabashira arrives and then the voting begins. But before we get the results of Class C, Baldi. we switch back to Class A. The entire Class A section was way longer compared to the anime, with lots of details and context missing, but they did at least show the bare minimum. Yeah. And after that, we find. I think that Class A, it was expected. I thought that Aonokoji was saving Katsuragi though, right? I, I, I thought that Aonokoji was literally playing four separate chess games. His own chess game in his own class. He saved Ichinose by the help of, you know, Ryuin's points that we told Ibuki to do. That's three chess games right now. And then the fourth chess game is the A-class game. But I don't know if he had any involvement there. Because Arisu intentionally saved Katsuragi. I think A-Class, there was no involvement. Maybe it was just three chess games, man. Finally move on to the results section for Class C. First up, Yamauchi thinks that Hirata will be expelled, to which Koenji replies that it won't be here. <laughs> Dead man walking. Look, there's a corpse talking right now. <laughs> the, <laughs> the fucking death sentence inmate <laughs> is anxious. Dude, Koenji roasted him so fucking hard. He was straight up saying like, what would your last meal be before you die? Dorito. Bro, Koenji has such good one-liners. because la Oh my god, here we go. Koenji took out his phone with an audacious grin on his face. I received this message from several of the girls in our class. It reads, I think Hirata-kun is intending to sacrifice himself tomorrow and will volunteer to be expelled, which I thought was going to happen too. And before we continue this, this is Koenji saying that a bunch of girls in his class are texting him. Is that true? Because like, I haven't really seen Koenji like, date any of our, our class girls. He's too busy with the senior girls, the third year girls, right? Before they graduate. But... So Koenji talks to Michan, Haruka, Sakura, Susune, Kei, Matsushita? Is, is, is this true? Am I, am I reading this correctly? Anyways, he might say terrible things or act cruel towards everyone, but those won't be his true feelings. Please have faith in him and only give him praise votes. It would seem this message made its way to everyone, save for you and Yamauchi-kun. No? <laughs> Meaning he's fucking out of it. Last night everyone in the class received messages that Hirata will try to sacrifice himself and asking to not vote for him. But Yamauchi didn't get the notice. Hearing this leaves Yamauchi and Hirata shocked. But Yamagot reveals his secret plan of getting praise votes from class A to survive. <laughs> Hearing this, Koenji presses Yamauchi and asks if he at least has a contract with Arisu, yeah. which leaves Yamauchi dumbfounded. Maybe a verbal contract, but is anything in paper? After that, and not only is everything in paper, did you have an admin? Did you have someone like Manabu overseeing this contract so no one can back out of it? Yamauchi doesn't think a shit like that. Shabashira arrives with the results of the vote. The results were obviously the same, though Hirata looks much more- Damn! This is Hirata in the light novel? Like, in this current age, like, in this current arc? He looks fucking just destroyed, bro. I, I, I low-key thought that this could have been like Nagumo after facing an L, but no, this is Hirata. ...more shocked and defeated when he ends up at second place. And here as where Kyo mentions that he was the one who spread the message about Hirata's sacrifice by using K. Oh, that, 
cut off. They they cut that. They cut. K was basically just a. She had a little bit of a good moment last episode, right? But it was just fan service. It's just K talking to K Kyo, you know. But she actually did something in this arc. Cool, cool. Kyo also tells us how many votes everyone got. Kyo ended up in the first place with forty-two praise votes, Damn. which leaves literally everyone in the. Everyone, look at this shit. Look at this shit, dude. All the girls are fucking shocked. Everyone. This is such bad. We're just signaling to the class that, hey, I might not actually be an NPC despite me being able to compete with Manabu in the track and field day. Like, this is not looking good. And now, this is clearly Arisu's plan. This is clearly what Arisu wanted out of this. This is the whole purpose of the little project with Yamauchi. But like, did Aonokoji plan this? Do you think that he at least like anticipated it and fully embraced it? I don't know. Knowing this character, he probably did. But knowing this fucking show, you're never going to know until the fucking end. You're going to be like, oh, God damn it. It was him again all along. Probably everyone in the class shocked. Yamauchi ended up last with 33 crit. <laughs> <laughs> I think the anime did a better job of showing like the absolute despair on his face. This is on votes. Sudo at 21 and EK with 20. Aside from that and cutting a few more moments of Koenji going off on Yamauchi. Yeah. This scene was Also, I I I mistakenly I I should have had the presence of mind to recognize that Haruka was right in between Yamauchi and Koenji the entire time. So even when like Yamauchi like fucking, you know, ran at them with the like a chair, Haruka had to fucking like jump. <laughs> Poor girl, man. She was in the worst possible position. She's like, "Oh shit. Oh shit. What's going on right now?" Adapted pretty well. Though the anime completely cut out the post-result classroom scene. After Yamauchi's expulsion, there's complete silence in the class and everyone coming to terms with the fact that one of them is permanently gone. Good. And Hirata in particular looks the most devastated. Bitch. Hirata, you're a fucking pussy. I hate you. I hate everything about you now. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We need to know what, what this is about. And again, he's not crying for Yamauchi being expelled. It could have been anyone. It's about the principles that led to this happening. It's about the leadership that led to this happening. What the fuck happened in the past? Did something similar happen? So did something so similar happen where they had to like democratically cast someone out with objective facts? And this could have been like one of his loved ones or some shit. And he, he suffered such a, a tragic event. And now he's like so traumatized. And now he resents any sort of leadership that resembles that. I don't fucking know, dude. Slowly, one by one, everyone leaves the class. After Koenji leaves the class, Kiyo actually calls out to him and tells him that he never expected Koenji to help the class. <laughs> Koenji replies that of course he'd help because he was at risk as well. Really? But Kyo says Really? Really? Koenji intentionally I never thought you'd take action for the class's sake, I told him. Of course. Even I would cooperate with Horikita Girl to avoid getting expelled. I love how he has little nicknames for everybody. Horikita Girl. Uh, Ayano Koji Boy. That's not what I mean. You incessantly goaded Yamauchi because you were trying to hate... Uh, you were trying to have the thankless job of being the sole recipient of his hate. What? So you're telling me all this shit talk from Koenji was actually kind of heroic? So that Yamauchi would only lash out on Koenji and no one else. You're telling me that Koenji actually had a greater moment here other than just being a petty fuck, which I thought he was being. I thought he's like <laughs> this fucking loser. Get him out of here. But he was actually, you know, being like a martyr. He's like sacrificing himself, his like so-called reputation so no one else would get hurt. Or maybe he did that expecting other people to read between the lines and then the people would praise Koenji for being like the shield. I don't know, but interesting. He acted extra harsh towards Yamauchi, so he'd only focus his anger towards him. Koenji thinks that Ki- Hmm, I have no memory of such a thing. I simply wanted a front row seat to his pathetic disintegration. That Koenji. <laughs> Who knows, right? Ko like, uh, Koji has his assumptions, but Koenji is basically confirming that he just wanted to eat popcorn in the fucking front row seat while this fucking rat gets expelled. Rovan, thank you for the Prime One subscription. I appreciate it, man. I mean, I oh, it's two months now. God damn. God damn. Fun fact that's an IRL friend. All right. He was reaching and they decide to leave it at that. It was such an amazing Koenji moment, so I'm sad it got. I think these, this episode might have been Koenji's best moments, absolutely. Like, what other moments are there? Well, there's some funny moments, right? Him, like, 
capturing the boar by himself or like him like Tarzan, this pool pool episode. Not not the pool episode, but you know, in the luxury yacht where he's like doing like, you know, fucking not drying himself. And he's got his abs everywhere. There's a lot of interesting, funny Koenji moments scattered throughout, but dude. The way that Koenji was like, you dare show murderous intent at me, then don't blame me for what's about to happen next. Hot card. After that, Horikita rushes out to ask Kyo how much of this scenario did he expect and see it coming. Everything. I don't know what the Arusu part. Did he actually care about, you know, did he actually manipulate Arisu into casting positive votes? votes? This is an insane amount of reach. You would never know with this show, though, you know? I'd like to think that he knew, but this could be another a little skirmish that Arisu wins yet again. Because last arc, right, with the Ichinose round, Koji didn't know that Arisu never cared about, you know, Ichinose. That Ichinose project was to just see how Koji would react. So, in fact, that's another small skirmish that Koji might have lost for not being like aware i don't really know but this seems like another round i don't really know kyo thinks that arisu probably wasn't targeting him at all and did everything just to expel yamauchi hmm. that's why she left so many hints such as approaching him out in the open you think arisu just did this because she just y you, you you really think that the whole point of this project was to get a petty revenge for a yamagod you know destroying arisu's walking cane in episode one Right? There, there is that option. She could be petty. Like, memes aside, she straight up could be petty. We're talking anime only right now, and this is a possibility that the anime has not confirmed. Sure, she could be, which I think would be fucking hilarious. Right? We get to see a quirk of the queen of the school, and she's actually a little petty lolly. Like, that would be hilarious, right? It would be nice to get a little bit of different quirks from Arisu, understand her character. It would even humanize her more if she was petty. was like, that motherfucker thought he could get away. <laughs> nah. After that, Horikita asks him if he was the one who told Manabu about Arisu and Yamauchi. Mm. To which Kyo doesn't reply once again and walks away. You don't need to know. Then we get to see the results of other classes. Ichinose had the highest praise votes in the entire school at 98. Entire Arisu school at 98, dude. 98 for Ichinose. First in class A, and Kaneda was first in class D. I don't know that my country was a fucking uh, a student in this place. No, it's not Canada. It's Canada. Then academically gifted class C students. I think that we saw... When was the last time we saw him? I forget. But where was Albert? You know, I really missed Albert last episode. You know, it was an Ibuki, Ishizaki, and Ryuin, you know, union, union. But, like, where was Albert? I just wish Albert was also included, man. I'll genuinely be surprised if any anime onlys even know who that is. Then Katsuragi and Ryuan come to look at the results, and they're both surprised that they managed. I see you didn't get expelled either, Baldy. You took the words out of my mouth. I thought for sure you would have been the one to disappear, he replied. <laughs> Apparently, I have the Grim Reaper on my side. The Grim Reaper, huh? Ayanokoji? Grim Reaper? asked Katsuragi. Don't worry about it. It's not like you'd be able to see him anyway, said Ryuwen, looking at the results with a smile. Though I gotta say, looks like that Sakayanagi chick did something pretty interesting. Man, I can't wait for second year. ...managed to survive. Katsuragi also looks defeated oh, after losing pretty much... There was a brief silence. However, there was something almost dreadful about the look in Katsuragi's face. Yahiko, who had always been devoted to him, was gone. At the same time, what this meant for Katsuragi was nothing more than the absence of anyone he needed to protect. Bro's got nothing left to lose and everything to gain. You telling me Baldi's gonna get a cool arc? What, Katsuragi? I didn't know you could make a face like that. Ryuin might have gotten the same impression I had. As you are right now, you look like you could even dupe Saka Yaragi. Yo. There is this meme, right? We have seen this meme. No, no, not the, not the head dent, but classroom of the Katsuragi. <laughs> There's a funny picture where basically the entire... <laughs> so basically it's just everybody just with Katsuragi's face, right? Even though I, I think the other one, they don't even have hair. I, there's another version where none of them, none of them have hair. Maybe, maybe this is a better one. <laughs> Yes, I love this one. I love this one. But like, memes like this are born out of a good reason, right? Maybe Katsuragi actually pops off. 
<laughs> Maybe Katsuragi right now has lost everything and now he has only things to gain. Bro is a... Like, like what happens if he actually bears his fang, huh? What if he actually bears the fangs of the queen right now? I don't think it makes sense for him to do it. Is he really the reason why the rest of the season is peak? If Baldi actually clutches and does something crazy at the, in this season, I'll, I'll say he's one of the best fucking characters, dude. I do love Katsuragi. Whenever Albert or Katsuragi is on screen, I'm always like, yo, ID these motherfuckers. They look like they're old enough to be fucking parents. His only supporter, but then he makes a face that surprises both Kyo and Ryuen. Oh? After Katsuragi leaves, we get the flashback with Ibuki and Ishizaki. That was a cute moment. Which was also longer in the light novel. And a lot of banter and Ishizaki and Ibuki fighting with each other got cut out. I think Ishizaki has been making a lot of great developments over this season, right? He was just a random NPC in season one. In season two, he just got his fucking, you know, he, he got his ass clapped by Anokoji's calligraphy and piano, right? But like season three, the first arc with like Keisei and like, um, you know, how we like bonded overnight, you know, we were like talking about dreams and their passions and how we were like actually not too different and now we're family you know and now he's even having moments like this where he's coming to the rescue for Ryu and humbling himself even like gushing over Ich, ich Ichinose which everyone would do Ishizaki just went from random fucking mob character that I didn't care about into someone that I actually recognize that's crazy dude it, the beautiful thing about this show is the fact that there's so many fucking students that you don't even know yet because they're background characters but they themselves can have crazy developments and can be really cool. I'm still waiting on EK to be cool, man. I just want there to be a moment where EK is like super cool and like actually rids us of Kushida, un like unironically. That would be, I think, a really cool moment. We also get a lot more details about the plan and Q being glad that Ibuki chose Manabe to expel <laughs> because it would make K happy and yeah. make her trust him more. Which she would now, right? Because we said we protect you. After that, Kyo actually gets a call from Michinose. They mostly discuss the results of the exam. Then Kyo asks her what she would have done if he and Nakumo weren't there to help her. Hmm. To which Ichinose replies that she either would have expelled herself or the class like would Hirata. have stakes and left it up to luck. Kyo thinks that her class was the only one where something like- Even though it couldn't be conveyed over the phone, I bowed my head, expressing my respect for Ichinose. Damn. He actually respects her a lot. The strategy by itself wasn't all that great, but the fact she was in a position to actually execute it is amazing. That is true. Like, Anakoji can never do what Ichinose is doing just because of, you know, they're just different, totally different persons, right? In the light novel, too, he constantly, like, recognizes and respects, like, Hirata or other people, even Kushita, for just being able to talk to people randomly, spontaneously, socialize with them, and just not be awkward, right? So, okay. Like that could have worked, and respect Ichinose for managing to create a class like that. Then he gets a call from Arisu, which is where the episode ends. Ah, that's a little bit of a spoiler. What, what, what did they? Sh I mean, was it Arisu? Did we see in the anime that was the subtitle? Did the subtitle show that it was Arisu? Leaving the final chapter. Okay, of the did, okay, 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 okay. Episode. Never mind. And that is all the cut content for this episode. All right. I'm not gonna talk about my thoughts on the episode in this video because I'm planning to make a video on how Next I video. feel about the Volume 10 adaptation. Okay, so I'll, I'll be there. The if I'll be there for that. And and again, the craziest thing about Episode 8 is not the fact that it's one of the most peak episodes in Classroom the Elite. It's the fact that it's too soon to put this into this like top tier category which i'm sure it's still gonna make it but like there are still episodes 9 to 13 of season 3 apparently that's gonna be even more fucking peak right and people are saying there is an introduction of this goat there is a new character apparently that's gonna get introduced and everyone is fucking unbelievably hyped up everybody just wants the goat to get introduced so it's getting my expectations very high but as usual please guys go to mr basis you can YouTube page, subscribe to him if you want, like his videos. He always creates, gives us great cut content that I always love enjoying. And hopefully, we will watch even more.